Hello everyone, welcome to Shri Voyage. Today we're going to be going over some new pieces from Dior Spring 2022. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So there were the swatches. Let's go ahead and get into playing with these beautiful eyeshadow palettes and the new blush. Let's go ahead and start off with the two shadows. And I want to mention that what I have been reading, not just on blogs as well as vlogs, is that everyone is saying that the colors that you see online are not really the colors that you get in hand. So I have to agree with that. For instance, this looks far less pink online than it does in real life. And this, I would say, just doesn't look the same at all. <laughs> um, similar, yes, but this is much more kind of goldy peach um, and that kind of terracotta color. And online, it just doesn't look the same. That said, these are both beautiful palettes um, and I look forward to playing with them, but something to note. And briefly, I wanted to mention that I am wearing the new Dior foundations. I have the Forever Matte and the Forever Glow. I already did a video on these. I will link them below, but I want to add something to what I didn't get to put in the last video. And that is after wearing these for a couple days, I did notice that there was settling, not only just for the matte, which I wasn't surprised by because I'm dry combination skin type. So I wasn't expecting a lot for the matte formula, but for the glow formula, I certainly was, and I found both settled into my skin after about an eight hour day. Now, I've been trying to work with these to find a new way of applying them, and I did add my RMS Reevolve Primer, and it was better. Here's the thing, I feel like straight out of the box, I shouldn't have to add other products to create a glow foundation. So something to note, I personally like the Glow Foundation, don't love it, um, and the matte foundation just really isn't for my skin type. I got it simply to show you guys who have uh, oily kind of combination skin. So, all right, let's go ahead now and try these shadows on. Now I'm going to use these dry as well as wet to show you guys different ways that you can wear the shadow. So I'm gonna start off with a sheer look and build up to something a little more dramatic. I'm going to go ahead and use my Sony G Builder 2 brush and start off with the very sheer kind of transparent pink color. 
just tapping this across the lid. This is a color I'd reach for if I was in a hurry and wanted to brighten the lid and create more of a wide awake look. That subtle kind of sheen helps to create a nice wide awake anti-fatigue type of eye look. Now right away, I already know that I'm going to want to take this and use it as my highlighter out here. So I'm just going to pop a bit of that on the outer cheek area on the upper cheekbone. So this is nice and bright. And then by going down through here, kind of opens the whole eye up and creates a nice brightening look, not just around this area, but all the way out to this area, which opens the eye and creates a much more kind of vibrant look across the face and more wide awake appearance. From there, I'm going to take a little bit of that shadow once again and go down the nose, just a very little bit to highlight the center of the face. Whatever's left, I will put a bit on the cupid's bow and a little underneath as well. So you could stop here, put a blush on, a gloss, and you're good to go. But of course, let's keep going. Next, I'm gonna come down here to this kind of soft taupey color. Just grab a little bit on my brush, and this now is the Sonia G Mini Booster Brush. I'm gonna go on the outer corner. And then just work it into that crease. It's just the outer V that I'm making here to Give my eye some definition and some shape. I pack most of the color by patting it into the outer corner of the eye. Once I've patted it into the skin, then whatever's left on the brush, I'm just bringing on to that brow ridge and subtly and softly moving in to the bridge of the nose. Now, if you want a more wide awake look, you're gonna go more towards the brow up here and not go down that kind of closes the eye and creates more of a sultry look so kind of work up onto that brow ridge and softly meet underneath that kind of brow to keep this eye area nice and open all right so here is the second eye look from the palette super easy now let's go ahead and add some color we'll bring the pinks in now now these three pinks feel free to use any one that you like depending on your skin tone I would say this is going to be a pretty universal shade. Um, these pinks are going to be a little bit more fun and vibrant, fun being kind of playful, I would say, and youthful. Um, so use maybe this first and add a touch of this if you want to kind of bring down that pink tone a little bit, or you can always add a touch of this first and mix in a little bit of that. What I mean by that is just take your brush and kind of go back and forth so that the pink doesn't get to be like too bright for you. So this is where I stop. I did the dry shadow and I'm gonna add in the wet shadow look to this eye look. And we have the Art Everyday Cup. It brings up the painter in me. So let's go ahead and wet these shadows. Now I use my Laura Mercier Camouflage Powder Synthetic Brush, but feel free to use any brush that's just is synthetic. I like to go to the art store and buy brushes for my makeup because they have really great synthetic brushes there. They're not super expensive or any makeup brush that you might have that has this type of flat shape to it. It's easy to pat on the shadow and then blend it out. So this has water in it. I'm gonna dip this brush into the water, take off any excess. For those of you that watercolor, you know what I'm talking about. You can take your brush even and dab the excess water off onto a paper towel. Now for those of you that are concerned about ruining your palette, you can always go in and scrape a little bit of the shadow off onto the back of your hand with a Q-tip and then just work from the back of your hand by blending the water and the shadow together. I personally don't care, so I'm gonna go straight into this palette here. And I'm going to grab this nice kind of peach pink color on the corner. Work the eyeshadow into the brush. From there, I'm going to place most of the wet shadow look on the lower part of the lid in the center. 
Now I want a little more oomph in the inner eye corner, so I'm taking my Kevin Aquan brush. This is in the small eyeshadow brush, but any brush that has a small rounded dome will work. Dip it in the water, tap a little off, go back in with that light shimmer color, and stick that right in the inner corner to kick it up a bit. Want to create a high beam type of effect for your um, highlighter that we used with the shadow. You take your finger, dip it in the water, grab a bit of that same light color, and just tap it on. You never want to do this because it'll move the makeup around by tapping it onto the skin, basically pushing the pigments with the heat and oil and the foundation all together into one. It's more subtle this way and it doesn't kind of emphasize texture because you're laying it into the skin instead of kind of moving it around. See how that extra layer there with wetting it kicked it up, made it a little bit more pigmented and bright. All right, so here's just a really pretty soft, subtle spring eye look. Now, I'm not a big fan of baby soft pinks around the eye. Um, to me, it can look just a bit too much. But if you're going to go there, I would definitely stick to the center of the lid or go all the way and do an editorial look and make it look very vibrant and over the top. Personally, I find that's kind of the best way to wear pinks, but you do you. Now, if you want to take it a step further and go underneath the lash line for a little more definition, you're going to go ahead and grab the synthetic brush again, dip it in the water, and I'm going to grab this really pretty mauve taupe once again. I'm just going to go right on the lower water line. And then we haven't used these, so this is an opportunity to show you guys how you can kind of ground these pinks a bit. Since we have this one down first, I could go in now and grab this bright pink and go right on top subtly just to give a nice brightening effect to that kind of taupey mauve color. So I'm gonna grab this pink right up here. I have a little water left on my brush. I'm going to go right in the center. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to add the pink new blush so that you can see what it looks like together. And I'll even put a light pink balm on so that you can see the whole color story. Here is the 352 New Dior blush. It's so pretty. This is a beautiful soft pink color. I'm using my Sonia G Designer Pro Brush. I'm going to tap it right underneath that highlighter. And work back. All right, pink dreams, nice and spring. Whatever's left on the brush, I'm going down the center of the nose. Just to bring a little color to the middle of the face here. You can always go in with a tiny, tiny bit of blush and just bring it on top of the shadow look to kind of bring everything together. I always grab a little bit of whatever's on my cheek and bring it into my um, kind of eye area. And same with my lips. Sometimes I'll take my lipstick and add a little of the cheek to unify this part of my face as well. All right, let's go ahead and put a lip on. And I'm going to use the New Hounds Tooth Limited Edition lipstick. This is in the color Sherry. I had to get it, of course, for obvious reasons. Very spring looking. Let's go ahead now and play with Organza. Here we have Organza, and I'm going to go in with these really pretty kind of dusty rose and taupe colors wet, and then I'll build some dry um, points around the face with you guys, but this time we're going to do opposite. <laughs> so I have my synthetic brush, dip it in the water, tap it off. Now obviously feel free to do everything I'm doing right now with just dry application. Really pretty kind of gold bronze color. 
subtle, not super intense, which is nice. I could see me wearing just this color by itself, wet or dry. Every day is just my go-to color to give me some subtle definition, warm up the lid a bit, and because it's got a bit of kind of a slight gold finish in there, it will help to brighten the lid and the eye area. Look at that. Ooh, that is pretty. I'm gonna wet my brush once again, tap off any excess water, take my paper towel, tap off any excess water once again, and then I'm gonna go in now with this really pretty kind of rose color, a warm rose. Using the same brush, I'm going to tap this right across the lower lid. Building up color here, creating more of a dimensional color story by not just using one note. We're layering colors to create a symphony of color across the lid. All right, from there, I'm gonna dip my brush in again, tap it off. As you can see, I'm not really wiping my brush clean every time, you can but because I'm depositing most of the color onto the lid um, and I'm not trying to color block, I'm just kind of letting all the colors meld together, um, it's not necessary, but up to you. All right, next I'm gonna grab this beautiful gold color. Here we have the gold, and I'm just gonna tap it right in the middle to create a flick of light in the center of the lid. That way when I move my head around or blink, you'll catch this Nice little pop of color. Next, I'm going to use my MAC 217 brush. And you can use one that's um, a bit smaller if you like, because I'm going to be doing some detail around the brow bone area. I'm going to grab this nice beige nude color and just put it right on the center of that brow bone and work out on each corner the rest of what is left on the brush. You really wanna focus that color right below the brow bone. You would look at this and think that it's just kind of more of a matte. It's got a beautiful sheen to it. So this is a color that you could wear all over the lid by itself. It would be gorgeous with like a chocolate liner. I'm actually gonna wet this and put it in the inner corner of my eye to show you guys how it actually has a bit of a kick to it. Wetting my domed brush again. Go in here, grab a bit of that, and I'll pop that right in the inner corner here. This is a nice way to use subtle highlighting um, on areas of the face compared to something as bright as this. This is much more on the neutral side, less frosty, less bright, but still, does the job. And take my synthetic brush again, dip it in the water, a bit of this. And you could take this color and put it on the outer corner to create some warmth um, to this outer area here and give some definition. Since we already have that brownish color that we first put on still placed down there. That will make it so that it doesn't get too kind of pinky or reddish. And if you want, feel free to skip this type of color strikes. It's getting a little bit more reddish rather than that kind of warm bronze. And you can take that color instead and just put it on the lower lash line. For those of you with hazel eyes, green eyes or brown eyes, this looks really pretty because it brings out your eye color. For those of you that don't like kind of the reddish look under the eye area, once you've laid that down, you can go in with that warm bronzy color and go right on top and it will ground that kind of rosy red color that I put down first. Last step, let's bring it together by adding our blush. Tapping that right on cheek area here. And I almost forgot, so I'm gonna wet my finger just a bit here and grab this gold, tap it there, and I'll put a little bit of that gold as my highlighter on my cheek area.
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at both sides. one is your favorite let me know in the comments down below all right everyone we've hit the end of the video i had so much fun bringing out these palettes using them wet and dry i hope you guys learned a few tips and techniques and tricks for you guys to get the most out of your palettes it's really important for me on this channel to not just show you guys makeup but to show you how to use your makeup on that note, questions or suggestions, you know what to do. Feel free to comment down below. And if you like what you're seeing here on Shri Voyage, the best way to support my channel is to go ahead and use those affiliate links down below. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me a comment, and hit that like button. As always, thank you so much for watching and continue to take care of yourselves, continue to take care of each other, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, everyone.